Hiya guys! Welcome to Korea! This is my new apartment in Cheongju, South Korea. I arrived about not quite three weeks ago now, um, back in August, at the end of August. It's taken a long time to get past the jet lag. Probably took about a week to a week and a half. And since I had to start work right away, it took a while to get settled. So that's why a video isn't coming out till now. <laughs> I arrived and pretty much immediately after arrival I was told to go to the school. Um, I didn't end up going to the school until the Monday following because I was so jet lagged. It was horrible. The company paid for the flight and I had a connecting flight out of Los Angeles. So I had it was like a five hour flight to Los Angeles and then a 13 hour flight from there as opposed to a direct 13 hour flight from Toronto so that was not fun. <laughs> I arrived in Los Angeles at like one o'clock in the morning my time and then I was running around Los Angeles airport which is apparently I've heard the largest in the US or something. Um, it was crazy trying to find my airline which was in a separate area of the airport, international area. That took a while. Here's Megan, half asleep, running around Los Angeles airport late at night. It is midnight right now, my time. But three hours earlier here in Los Angeles and trying to find your way through a new terminal, a massive airport, oh my gosh, like look at that. It's freaking massive here. So this is fun. <laughs> so now we're in another area. And I'm looking around for a sign, and it's up there. <laughs> Let's see if I can turn it around. It's all the way up there. I'm looking around for a tiny little sign. Wow. That was fun. So then I found my flight, and I got on my 13-hour flight. Let's just say by the time I arrived in Korea, I was pretty much half dead. <laughs> but after pretty much a solid 24 hours of traveling, I arrived at the airport. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning, Seoul time. I got on a bus out to Chongju, which is where I am now, and I survived. I arrived and was brought to my apartment. This actually is just a temporary apartment. They are moving us. Once I arrived, they decided to change our apartments for one month, so I'm only here for one month. I think it's about a couple more weeks until I leave this place. This is a very old apartment, actually. This is a villa they've told me. So as far as I understand there are three different types of apartments in Korea. Um, they're not like what we consider apartments back home in Canada. Um, so there is villas which is what this is which is the smallest. It's basically like low-rise. They're about five floors on average, four or five floors. Um, and then there are these things called office tells which are high-rises like think like the 24 buildings which are the most modern ones, which I am hoping I will get, <laughs> and then actual apartments. But when you say apartment in Korea, it means a four bedroom, two bathroom unit, basically a family unit. You'll see them in these huge settings, like it'll be a whole bunch of buildings all together in like a complex, and they're huge high rises usually owned by the huge corporations, like you'll see on the sides of buildings, I swear the corporations own Korea, you'll see these on the side of buildings like LG and a lot of the other big brands that you know, like who knew LG owned apartment buildings? Apparently in Korea they do. <laughs> so that was interesting. That was my first culture shock arriving. I'll show some pictures of what I took when I first arrived because I was just like on the bus it was a two-hour bus ride from Incheon Airport to Chongju, um, and I was just like in complete awe, like looking out the window, like, "What's that? What's that?" Yeah, culture shock to the max. Pretty sure it's past now, at least the first phase. We'll see. <laughs> Big buildings. Those are apartments. Then you'll see like the office tells, which are pretty like. I don't want to say like, like, I guess they're more like cookie cutter, they're all exactly the same on the inside, but they're the most modern, so those look really nice. Fingers crossed I get one of those. And then there's villas, which is what I'm in currently right now. 
It's very, very old. I think the school's had these apartments for like 15 years, 15 plus years. So it's a good thing they're changing them. Um, hopefully I'll get something, fingers crossed I'll get something really nice, hopefully. <laughs> the school is paying for the apartment, so the apartment comes as part of my contract. I have a one-year contract to teach English in Korea. Um, I am working at a Hegwon, uh, a private after-school academy. Um, and I have to say, I absolutely adore my job. I pretty much knew since high school that I wanted to be a teacher, but of course, back then, no idea, no clue what I wanted to do. My teachers told me I'd be a good teacher, and I kind of thought, oh, maybe, maybe, but then, yeah, when you're that age, you don't know what you want to do. <laughs> Nobody does, so I kind of did the went around, had my 20s, had a quarter life crisis, and here we are, and now I have a teaching job. I graduated university in April, a um, bit older than most, but I did it. I got my university degree, and here I am. I am teaching English in Korea, living the dream. <laughs> um, but yes, I've been at it for, this is week three now, I think. Week three. And at first it was a bit rocky because I'm not sure if this is, consistent with all heg ones, but there was no training. <laughs> I essentially showed up and they were like, yeah, go, go for it, go get him, tiger. And I'm like, okay, this is stressful, but we'll figure it out. It took me a while to write my syllabi as to what I was supposed to do for each class because there's so many different levels and so many different classes and different textbooks. So I'm just like, uh, <laughs> it was a lot, especially since I walked in on Monday and my contract started September 1st, and I think Monday was the September 2nd. Um, so basically on September 2nd, I went in, still partially jet lag, I wasn't sleeping through the night yet, but much better than I was on the Thursday that I arrived, and literally just went in and they threw me in front of a class, and I was like, alrighty, turn page, turn to this page, okay kids, we're gonna do some reading. Yeah. Needless to say, that first class did not go very well. It was okay, but the kids were kind of like, what is teacher doing? <laughs> but that's what happens when you get thrown into a class and there's no training, but it was all good. So after, after the, I had a break in the first day, I got pulled aside and they gave me full training, so that was good. Um, it just took a bit of time and it was because of the jet lag and I'm not sure how it normally works, but it all worked out in the end. Now I've been teaching for... Today, the, yeah, today, today is Monday. Today was week, is the beginning of week three, so two solid weeks. Um, after the first week, I felt much, much better. I kind of got a feel for the classes. And then after last week, and today especially, I'm getting a really good feel for the classes. Like, I know how things work. My syllabi are all written up. I'm just following it. And even there's a couple classes that are just kind of different. The textbook changes every semester based on the students. I was completely lost at first. <laughs> But now looking through, I'm like, okay, I can see I can do this one in like three classes per chapter and get to this point and then we'll have to figure things out from there. It takes a bit to find your groove, but once you do, then you have so much fun. I love being a teacher. I know a lot of people only do it temporarily, but I love being a teacher. That is my passion. And I love my kids. I love my students. They are amazing. They are hilarious. I teach all the way from, I believe, like seven or eight years old to middle school. I think my oldest are 13? 13 or 14 years old? It's a big range. Basically, we our classes start in the early afternoon and I usually end off late in the evening. It works out that we have the younger students earlier and then we have the middle school students later. So it really depends on when they get out of classes, like when they get out of public school, then they come to our school and we teach them then. So I start off with the really, really young ones and then go up to middle school in the evening classes. Basically anything in the evening is middle school. So it's a broad range, but it's really good because I get a feel for both. It's interesting because you have to do a different, completely different style for middle school versus the elementary school students. Like you get a lot of excitement, a lot of songs, a lot of dances with the younger kids and then the middle school kids are just more calm. For the most part. Some of them can be quite loud, but 
they're a lot of fun. Um, especially I had an adva more advanced level class today and they were a lot of fun and we were joking and it was so much fun. But yes, so I have arrived in Korea. I have been teaching for a couple weeks now. It's been a bit of a rocky start because literally arrive, start working, and I'm still getting a few odds and ends together for what I need. Um, and also being vegan, I have found vegan slash plant-based is not so easy in Korea. Yeah! So if you come here as a vegan, just know that veganism is not really a widely known concept in Korea. <laughs> there is actually one vegan cafe I have found in Chongju. One. <laughs> uh, I use an app called Happy Cow, which helps me find vegan food anywhere in the world. Uh, it showed up on there, initially just as a bakery, so I didn't think much of it, but then I actually went with a friend, and it's a full-on cafe. And they have all vegan sandwiches and a lot of vegan drinks. The milk tea, of course, is not vegan, but you can get it with soy milk, so that helps. But yes, veganism is not really practiced here. Like, no one knows what it is. They're heavy on Korean barbecue, which is a lot of meat. And they're heavy on milk and cheese and, of course, fish. I'm usually not too picky on fish. Like, I'm plant-based slash vegan, but not super strict. Um, but yes, they really don't know what veganism is here so much. In Seoul, there are quite a few vegan places to go. I think in the Gangnam district. Think of that, think, think of the song, Gangnam Style. <laughs> yes, that district. Pretty much that was the only area, though, from what I saw on the map. Yes, it's been quite difficult. So far, I mean, I brought ingredients. I have a protein smoothie for breakfast. I brought ingredients for that, and I've been having that for breakfast, which is fine. And I've managed to order some stuff off of iHerb. No problem. It comes right to my door once I figured out the address, which are very confusing. It's backwards, completely backwards to North American addresses. Start from the biggest to the smallest. So country, city, and everything down to the smallest as opposed to opposite in North America. So I'm basically living on smoothies, and so far pasta, and a couple recipes I've managed to make because there are no ovens in Korea either. I remembered that from Japan. Honestly, I didn't realize how many of my recipes, my vegan recipes that I've been making at home for the last two years were oven bake. Yeah, like 90% of my recipes are oven bake. <laughs> So, I don't have an oven, I have the stovetop, I don't even have a fish fryer like I had in Japan. I just have an, a stove. Just a stove with two burners, it's gas. I went and found a couple recipes that are stovetop, basically just veg and maybe some rice with some spices. Just bowls, just bowls. So I made that and I have another recipe to make, but other than that it's smoothies and pasta. So if you come to Korea as a vegan, just know it is a bit difficult to live here as a vegan. I have had to give in and basically go vegetarian a lot because, especially on the trip we just came back from because it was Chuseok this past weekend, Korean Thanksgiving, uh, we went on a trip up to the northern area, kind of east of Seoul, um, to a mountain up there, and yeah, vegan in a small town doesn't really work. <laughs> Even the breakfast that they had built in, they only had milk. They didn't even have soy milk. And soy milk is quite popular here. It's seen as a health drink. So, but yeah, they didn't have it there. So I had no choice. If I wanted to survive, if I wanted to have food, I basically had to go vegetarian. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's vegetarian options. There's lots of, like, bibimbap. They'll have veggie bibimbap, which is a very popular dish here. Um, basically just vegetables. Um and it usually comes with an egg on top. I pulled off the egg sometimes to make it completely vegan. And it's got like this spicy sauce, which, oh my gosh, that's another thing. Spice levels. Spice levels in Korea are through the roof. Like, if you come to Korea and you don't like spicy food like I do, be prepared to get into spicy food. The friends that I've made so far have basically said, same thing happened to them, they arrived, they could not handle spicy food, but you just keep exposing yourself to it and trying it and you will develop it because most Korean food requires the spicy component, like bibimbap for instance. 
they have a sauce that they put on it. I hadn't really had a lot of Korean food before I came here, so it was a new experience. But the sauce they put on it is what gives it most of its flavor. So if you don't put it on, it doesn't have much flavor, which is why my bibimbap has kind of been dull <laughs> when I've had it. I tried, I tried to put bibimbap on it, or I tried to put the sauce on it. I tried, I tried to put the sauce on it, but I put a little in the corner and I put some of the vegetables in there and then had it and my lips were on fire for like an hour after that. So even like, and people say that that's not that spicy. They're like, that's like really low on the Korean spice meter. So I'm like, hmm. <laughs> so you can go vegan. Like bibimbap is very easy to make vegan. Um, they usually just put an egg on it when there's the veggie one. You can literally, it's like a fried egg. You can just literally peel it off. Um, and there are mushrooms and things in there, I believe. So it's, it's filling. It's just without the sauce, there's not really much to it. It's just a bunch of vegetables. <laughs> so bibimbap is very easy to veganize. But other than that, like a lot of things are still just vegetarian here. It's extremely hard to be vegan. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm outside Seoul too. If it, if I was in Seoul, maybe it'd be fine. But here in Chongju, it's not really the easiest. I'm still finding new places, and I'm chatting with other vegans to find out other new places that I can go. Um, I'm trying my best. I will fight. I love my plant-based lifestyle. I feel amazing on it. Um, and to be honest, when I've had egg, when I've had other stuff, milk and all that, it just doesn't taste the same to me anymore. I like my plant-based lifestyle, so I'll figure it out. Either I'll order some stuff off iHerb or I'll see what they have in stores here. Like that vegan cafe, I've been told you can pick up vegan ingredients there, specialty ingredients. And I mean, there's a health food store here as well that I found, so I have to explore a little more. It's definitely harder than Denmark because nobody speaks English. Like, nobody. <laughs> So that will be a little more difficult, but I'm learning Korean. I was taking Korean lessons before I left Canada for about two months with a Skype teacher, which was invaluable. I highly recommend doing it with a Skype teacher. This isn't a sponsored video, but I use italki, italki.com for all of my language learning. And let me tell you, having a live teacher to chat with and them teaching you one-on-one -on -one, like on, in a live Skype session is the perfect way to learn a language. I know there are other resources out there like online websites, various places you can go memorize memorize things. There's Memrise, there's other ones. They're great, but it's nothing compared to having a live teacher and chatting with them on the fly. You have to have the practice component. That is key. The Korean I learned in Canada before I came, I was able to put it into immediate use. Immediate use. It was great. I was able to talk to people at the airport. I've been able to already go to Starbucks and order my drink. I can already talk to people. I can have full conversations. And I haven't even had a lesson here in Korea yet. I've just been surrounded by it and I used the Korean I learned before I left. So actually I signed up for lessons here at a local language school. They've got five levels. I'm at level three. I learned that much before I left Canada just because I had Skype lessons with a native Korean teacher over the internet. So if I can do it, if I can speak that much Korean before even landing in Korea, anyone can. You can do it. It doesn't take the language gene. Anybody can learn a language. It helps if you've learned other languages, but you pick it up as you go. Language learning is a process, definitely. I've learned a lot, I've made a lot of mistakes. That's the best way to learn. Make mistakes. That's the best way to learn. It is very difficult with the language barrier, but I am learning. I've signed up for a local language school and I'm going to continue improving my Korean. The big problem for me right now, I can say a lot. I know a lot of grammar. I just miss, I am missing vocabulary, which is, you learn that by being immersed in the culture. Like, I, can have the simple conversation so easily now. Annyeonghaseyo! Kasamida! Like, it's, it's always, like, uh, it's second nature now. Before, I could never remember how to say thank you, or um, you're welcome, or oh, it's nothing. Like, it's just, it just, it's all there now. 
like it's so easy. You just you use it everywhere. You're just like, I'm gonna see like it's it's so easy like it's you don't forget it because you use it every day and in fact the words that I have been using I have my flashcards I use Anki for my flashcards and I do them every morning the ones the words that I use on a day-to-day -day basis or even have used only a couple times one or two times I'll go on Anki it's like oh yeah boom done got that one like it's it's no problem it's a bit difficult having the language barrier but I'm starting to talk to more people and it's being good. Koreans are so nice. They are so helpful. They will bend over backwards to help you. If, even if you don't speak the language, like you can use Google Translate, you can, they will work with you and do motions and help you. It's been so nice. Like, I'm, I'm amazed at, at how nice Korean people are. It's so nice. Um, I've gone into stores, like the health food store, and I was looking for something. I think I was looking at the laundry detergent, and I'm like, I couldn't tell based on looking at it if it was a powder or a liquid and I wanted a powder because the washing machine is top load and I'm, I basically, the l lady came over and just started talking to me in Korean and I'm just like, ah, like, 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 han <laughs> Um, So she helped me and I showed her on Google Translate, like, powder and she she's like, that one, that one. I'm like, oh, thank you. Uh, I was like, kasamnida. Every time I've gone to a store, they've been really nice and... Everybody, like, they, they talk to you in Korean, they just, they treat you like a regular person. Even, some, some people will try to talk to you in English, they'll, um, but not very many. Most will just talk to you in Korean like you're a local. So it's kind of nice, actually, um, to, for practice. But then I have a few random people that have spoken to me in English, I'm like, whoa, English, where did that come from? <laughs> so that's been interesting, but that's, that's very rare, very rare, especially here. I, I think maybe you'd find that more in Seoul, but here it's, Quite a bit, di quite a bit different. There's practically no English. I mean, of course, at my job, I speak English all day because I am an English teacher, and even to my coworkers, I speak in English. But outside that, on the weekends, in the mornings, when I'm out shopping, I'm always speaking in Korean. I'm trying my best because a nobody speaks English, and b it's good practice. So I even go on Google Translate when I'm at the store. That's the biggest thing is vocabulary. I'd be like, okay, what's the word for this? Oh, okay, and then I go. I was like, ah. It's like, do you have this? Do you have that? And then a lot of times they'll ask me at the cash as well about um, everywhere has a points card. Home Plus has a points card. Daiso has a points card. Where did I go? The other one. Latte. Latte has a, has a points card. They all have points cards and it's all in the apps. So I'm just like, they're like, they asked me if I had a, have a points card. I'm like, opsuyo, mm, opsuyo. And the, I'm just like, it's like, mm, how do I, like, I asked them in Korea, I'm like, how do I get that? And they show me on their phone. And literally, they just pull out their phone, the cashier, and like show me the app, and I'm like, oh, can I take a picture? Like, Sajin, okay, okay? And then they're like, yeah, I'm gonna take a picture, so it's great. So I've gotten a couple apps that way. I've got Korean apps. There's no problem finding them in the, uh, the Canadian app store, which I think my phone is still on, so my Canadian phone I still have. Um, I just signed up to a data plan at the airport until I get my resident card, and then I can get an actual phone plan. So, yeah. But that's what's been going on so far. There's been a lot of excitement over the last three weeks. My journal has been getting a workout. <laughs> um, first week was really, really stressful and figuring things out. Second week was a bit better. And now I'm actually getting comfortable, which is why I'm able to now make a video. I posted some things on Instagram. If you check out my Instagram channel, um, some pictures there, because it was just easier to just post some pictures than to sit down and make a full-on video when I was... Still tired, still jet lagged, still figuring things out. I'm still going to the store every day, trying <laughs> getting picking up odds and ends. So it'll be a bit before I'm settled, and especially since we're going to be moving probably in a couple weeks now. I think I've heard because it was when I came. They said about a month. So yeah, that'll be in a couple a couple weeks. So fingers crossed we get a good new place. We'll see. And yeah, I guess we'll see you then. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next update.